Well, I know we were only sent this for information. But no, sir, I'm not happy. Robert Allsworthy Banks, born 1927. First class honours, Cambridge 49. General manager, Anglo Consolidated Instruments in Eastern Europe since 59. Resident in Prague. So what's bothering you? He was a JIB source. Had been since 61. Yes. And he's dead. Not even Joint Intelligence Bureau sources are immortal. He was one of the best sources JIB had anywhere in the world. Who told you that? The man who ran him. He's just been on the phone to me, sir. Is he unhappy too? Very. Killed in a car crash, 2 a.m. this morning, five miles from a party he'd been had, on his way home. Well, they're happy at present. But remember, he was identified by a local employee of Anglo Consolidated. Nobody else involved. Only a demolished telephone kiosk, property of the Czech state. Which they're not even asking for compensation for. Well, I suppose, even if he wasn't drunk, they could make out a damn good case that he was. And what's more, they're flying the body back tomorrow morning. Timeo Danaos. Sir. Beware the Greeks bearing gifts. And bitterly distrust the Czechs, who are being unnaturally helpful. Hmm. He was a foreigner in Prague for over ten years. Even if the KGB didn't suspect him, I bet the Czechs did. What you're saying is that the Czechs have a top British industrialist over a battle. They probably suspected his other activities. And they could make quite a lot about decadent Western drugs. But all they're doing is sending the body home with quite unnatural speed. Well, what are you suggesting is done? Send a sandbag. Well, these things cost money, Burnside. And that paper's clearly headed for information, not for action. Look, I'm off to Ashford for a conference. I shall be staying overnight, and I shall be very difficult to contact. I will need your authority, sir. Well, see, JIB. If after that you're convinced that you're justified in spending whatever it costs of the taxpayer's money, but only if you're absolutely convinced, then a sandbagger may go to Prague. Yes, sir. The point is that Banks was irreplaceable. He was in a position to go into just about any electronics factory in Czechoslovakia, Poland, East Germany, anywhere ACI were operating. But surely ACI would be manufacturing a lot of hardware that they don't sell to communist countries? Of course. And Banks would have known that? He was involved in the designing of quite a lot of it, from what I gather. That was what made him so valuable. You see, before he became a very successful businessman, he was a pretty distinguished scientist. When he first went to ACI, which was back in 1950, it was as a research physicist. It's a very impressive list of patents to his credit. It's all in the file. What's more, he probably had the entree to more restricted areas in Eastern Europe than any other Westerner. Not because they wanted him in, but because they had no choice. A lot of the equipment that ACI make, and he was selling it, nobody else makes. And he deliberately denied his scientific background. He just acted a businessman. So they wouldn't know how much he could pick up by just looking round? Precisely. Well, he doesn't seem to have sent you much lately. Well, ACI's business in that part of the world have increased five-fold in the last four years. Banks was working all hours got created and more. And you didn't lean on him? We didn't employ him. That's a full file. It's all in there. Can I have a copy, mate? That is a copy. Do you think there's any domestic trouble? No, he's married. Two daughters. Twins, if I remember. Where are they? In England at the moment. I told his wife this morning. Really? Why you? I don't know. I repeat, we didn't employ him. Now, he was a very, very good source. He had his contact in the embassy in Prague, and when he came across anything he thought might interest us, he passed it off. That's all. Why do you think he worked for JIB? Why does anybody work for the British government? Why, well, indeed. Well, all we planned for him was to get a K. He'd have got a knighthood anyway for helping the export drive, and he might have got it a bit earlier through us. And that would have appealed to him? I doubt it. It's something we've arranged within our budget. It's free. Do you think there's anything out of order about his death? Yes. Why? Well, I didn't know him very well, but he was the, quite simply, the only driver I'd ever driven with when I wasn't frantically doing the driving myself from the passenger seat. He was a superb driver. Yet he kills himself by hitting a telephone kiosk of all immovable objects. And again, I remember him as, well, not the life and soul of the party, but an enormously likeable man. He seemed to have friends everywhere. Yet he goes to a party alone and leaves it alone. I don't suppose we'll ever get to the truth. You're not very popular. The dentist with his abscess. Willie? Yes. Where the hell have you been? Just saying, I've been to the dentist with his abscess. He's given me an injection to take the inflammation well, down. Well, don't worry, they'll have dentists in Prague. What? You're on your bike. When? You're booked on OK755 at 13.15. Oh, God, I'm in agony. Try oil of cloves.
Dobrý den. Afternoon. Uh, William Kane, Department of Trade. Yes, that's Avalon. Is Mr. Banks in conference? No. You you can't. He won't on every. To Vishini. He isn't here. Oh hell. When's he due back? I'm only in Prague for a short while. Mr. Kane. Mr. Banks is dead. He was killed. He was killed. Last night. In a car accident. Well, it's impossible. I spoke to him on the phone a week ago. What about the family? I and mean, Irene and Tessa and Fiona? They are in England. In a telex. Mrs. Banks has been told. I don't believe this. You seem to be one of those men who'd live forever. I know. Well, I suppose I'll just have to carry on as though. Uh... Did you have the figures ready for me? I'm sorry, what figures? Did you tell you about that? I suppose they would have treated that as confidential. Thank you. I am his confidential secretary. Yes, I wasn't suggesting it. What uh... were the figures about? Well, he was doing an uh, analysis of some aspects of the Czech market. Yes. Well, perhaps they're in his office, if you'll follow me. How long have you known Mr. Banks? Long enough. He was a very close friend of mine. Did you know much about his uh, confidential life? A little. Did you know about his connection with joint investment banking? No. J.I.B. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. I did know about that. I thought you might be. That's why I brought you in here. You see, the girl outside is Czech. Mm -hmm. Were you involved with his J.I.B. life? Well, I wasn't supposed to know about it, but I often had to type out information that was nothing to do with the firm. Uh, you guessed? Yes. Then he half told me. He mentioned J.I.B.? Yes. Well, it's lucky you're so discreet. You get used to being discreet, this side of the Iron Curtain. You won't find any statistics in there. Just wondered if he sometimes drank a bit too much. It never affected his work, I can assure you. No. Robert, I can still hardly believe this. Well, they say it was over in a second. He was driving too fast, hit a kiosk, he went through the windscreen. He never would wear a seatbelt. I suppose his face must have been smashed to pieces, was it? Well, I've tried not to think about that. Who identified him? Jan Valesh. Who's that? He's one of the reps. It was his party Mr. Banks was at. Do you think it would be all right if I saw him? I mean, Irene's bound to ask me what happened. Well, he should be in the rep's office now. Shall I tell him to come up? Would you? It's a good idea. Well, she let us in Panavalache. You'll be here with second. The reps are milling about all day. They seem quite lost without Mr. Banks. Just can't get used to the idea that he's dead. No. Look, I know that Robert wouldn't want us to uh, gloom over this. I mean, I was going to ask him and Irene out to dinner tonight, but uh, well, if you aren't doing anything special, would you like to come along instead? I mean, if we're going to be miserable, we might as well be miserable together. Hmm? No. I suppose there'll be a queue waiting to take you out. Dale. Do you know Mr. Yeah, this is Mr. Kane. Hello. He's an old friend of Mr. Banks. I'm sorry to ask you this, but uh, Irene's, uh, Mrs. Banks is bound to ask me what exactly happened uh, at your party. Mr. Banks is most kind to come. Who else was there? No one. Just my family. An old family from Hana Horakova. We are, what do you say, Zasnobeni. Engaged. We are engaged. Is there anybody else from ACI there? No, in Czechoslovakia, when one is engaged, uh, there is a party just for the family. Also, Mr. Banks is special. He is my boss. I'm told they're quite good, aren't they? Czech engagement parties? Yes. Lots to drink, eh? Beer, whiskey, wine, vodka? Yes. And champagne. You see, there again, Irene is certain to ask me. Do you think uh, perhaps he's had a bit too much to drink? No. Also, he leaves early. Uh, perhaps, what do you say, middle of the night? What, midnight, 12 o'clock? Yes. Oh, and then the police telephone him about the accident? No, there comes a car. A police car? Yes. Well, how do they know that Mr. Banks has been at your party? He's a foreigner. When you saw him, uh, did it look like he'd been killed at once? Yes, I can see. How? Oh. His head is all broken and also his face. How did you recognize him then? I know his car, also his suit. And also he wears a flower here for my being engaged. That is from that that I know him. Thank you.
Please, tell Mrs. Banks he is most kind man. Yeah, she'll appreciate that. Thank you. Still haven't told me if I can take you out to dinner. I'd love it. So where the hell's Mrs. Banks? What do you want me to do, sir? Well, she was told around 8.30 this morning of her husband's death. Since then, no sign of her or the children. Nobody answers the phone. There's nothing more I can do, sir. Get inside, whether she's there or not. Yes, sir. And Mike, be careful. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to trouble you, Mrs. Waverley Smith. I'm trying to contact your neighbour, Mrs. Banks. I have rather an. What do you want? Uh, I have a message for Mrs. Banks. It's rather urgent. I'm sorry, but I don't know you. Uh, no, I'm from Wilcox, Wilcox and Steve, the solicitors. There's been an inquiry about some property. She isn't in. No, but it is rather urgent. She left this morning. Uh, with the children, of course. Do you know when she'll be back? Not tonight. She told me. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, you could be a burglar, couldn't you? You spoke to her this morning? At half past nine when she left. I would be most grateful if you could remember the address. Well, I'm sure the school would know. The school? St. Benedict's. Or somewhere near Exeter. Oh, they're bound to know. St. Benedict's. That's where Tessa and Fiona are going. Well, that's why she's not here. She's taking them to their new school. Oh, so exciting. One's first day at one's new school, don't you think? Yes, thank you again, Mrs. Uh... Waverly Smith. Yes. The school said she was staying at the Imperial Exeter. I checked. She's booked in there for one night. Alone? Single room, anyway. There is something else, sir. When I was at school, one of the kids, his father was killed in Cyprus with the army. Now, the first thing the school did was to warn everybody so that nobody accidentally made some remark that would, you know, hurt accidentally. Well. Well, I spoke to the school secretary on the phone, and from the way she talked, it was pretty clear that they didn't know that Banks is dead. Taking you out quite a lot to places like this. Hmm? Me? Of course not. Hmm. And I knew him, he had quite an eye for a pretty girl. So I suppose with his wife here. <laughs> that didn't deter him. Still, they're all grown up people. Who? All of them. Yeah, I think he did once mention other women. There was anyone. Oh, not for me. Show me the stuff is virtually none else. <laughs> Tell me about you then. Do you like it here? Oh, it's a lonely place. Well, you have to be quite careful, yeah? Yes. Still, you could have had a better boss than Robert. Yeah. Of course, he changed. How? Since Marushka. Marushka. <laughs> I thought you knew Robert. Well, he used to be my best friend then, years ago. Yeah, come to think of it, the last time I saw him, he mentioned something about a girl. I don't think I quite got the name there. That'll be Marushka Harokova. There's never been anyone else. Mm. I can't even remember how he met her. Huh? <laughs> She's his personal assistant. What's she like? Marushka? 
She's young. She's 22. She's beautiful. She's brilliant. She's funny. She dresses marvellously. You don't like it, though. <laughs> Why don't we have a slip of it before we go? Mm. What did Irene think about Marushka, then? His wife had an idea. She knows about it, of course. The whole of Prague knows. Yes, can we have uh, two sliver bits in the bill? Uh, two sliver bits out. Well, you're not just attracted to your talent. No. I bet Robert got those figures out for me. I mean, it's not that there's anything dodgy about them. I mean, they wouldn't be in the West, certainly. It's just that I'd rather people around here didn't know that I was interested in them. If there'd have been anything unfamiliar in the box, I'd have seen it. When? When I went through it this afternoon. And what were you looking for? Thank you. Thanks. There could have been anything. Not just J.I.B. things. Like personal things. Letters. No, there wasn't. No. And even if there had been, it was nothing to do with them. With whom? The police. Why should they be interested? They were interested enough in this flat. What do you mean? Well, this morning, after I'd heard, I went round to Mr. Banks's flat. Well, in case there was anything personal? I don't care what they think about Marushka, but there's no reason why he should be period. No? The place was swarming with police. Swarming with them. <laughs> I think we better be going. Still suffering from jet lag. Toothache. Well, the chemistry will be closed. I've got some more for toothache. It's very good in my flat. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. I'll grin and bear it tonight. It wouldn't take long. No, I've got to pick up something at the embassy anyway. Well, the embassy will be all closed now. Not to me, though. I know the doorman. Mike, get up here, will you? Roger, sir. Marion, I need you. It's nice to be needed early in the morning. When's she get him? He's at Ashford. I know where he is. That's not what I asked. It's going to be a difficult day, I can tell. He's supposed to be lunching with Sir Geoffrey. Arrange for me to see him before lunch, will you? Yes, I'll try. Yes, sir. Mike, I've just had a signal from Willie. He says the Banks is having an affair with a woman called Marushka Horikova, personal assistant, presumably Czech. Horikova, right. Get on to ACI, find out if they know anything about it. Yes, sir. And run it through our files, too, will you? What about asking Jeff Ross if the CIA have anything on him? What are you waiting for, Mike? Sir. You're aware of what you're asking? Yes, sir. You do realise that, in theory, it requires the permission of the Home Office, a registrar, a coroner and jury, not to mention the widow. Yes, well, what I do know is that Sam Baker One has questioned the man who originally identified Banks' body. He doesn't think the man's any sort of agent. Oh, that's only an opinion. Well, I agree. But let's assume that the body is Banks. The face was smashed out of recognition. The man who identified him only had a chance to look at him for a second. We've no way of knowing how he actually died until we do an autopsy. I've read your memorandum. Well, there's one thing more. Our first report said that Banks died at 2 a.m. The man who identified him said he left the party at midnight. And we can presume Banks was tailed. Look, one car, I shouldn't think he'd merit more. So why did it take two hours for him to travel five miles? You don't think it is Banks, do you? Well, I think we ought to make certain. For God's sake, be discreet. Well? Well, it could have been a car crash. Multiple fractures of the skull, severe lacerations on the right hand and arm. Thanks. As though he put his arm up to protect himself as he went through the windscreen. Mm. And of course, all the lacerations on the face itself. Quite unrecognizable. Yep. No trace of anything else? What poisons, you mean? That's right. Not that I could find in the time available, Neil. I only had an hour. Who was he? Does it matter? No. Hold this for me, will you? Certainly. No, it's just that it's always more of a tragedy with a young man. Well, it's not that young. Oh, I'd say he was young. Thanks. Certainly well under 30. Thank you, I've finished. Right, I'm on the bus. Ah, what's been happening here? No Jeff luck Ross with phone. records, I'm afraid. There's nothing on anyone called Marushka Horokova. Damn, what Jeff about Ross it? Jeff Ross Well, what does he want? Nothing much. Just said he'd be walking back along the embankment shortly after five. And Mrs. Irene Banks is back from Exeter. Or a woman claiming to be Mrs. Banks. She answers the phone in her flat. I said that I was the mother of a girl at St. Benedict's and I was phoning all the new parents about a scheme for handing on school clothes as the children grow out of them. 
She said that she was just popping out to get her hair done, but she'd be back later if I'd like to ring again. She sounded rather nice. So did Matahari. Want to tell me what you want the information for? Later, if it turns out to concern you. Well, Langley seems to think it concerns us already. Of course, it would have helped if you provided more accurate information. I told you where she works, how old she is, her name. Terrific, except the two out of the three were inaccurate. First of all, she isn't called Marushka Horakova. Her real name is Marushka Zarada. And she isn't age 22. She's over 30, for God's sake. Presumably, what she does keeps her young. Well, what does she do? Well, you know the old saying, every woman's sitting on her fortune. Well, this one's been cashing in on hers. And who's been buying? Oh, Elmer H. Milton, among others. I wonder why I resigned. <laughs> Who else? Jean Duval, former deputy head of Agence Francaise, Lieutenant General Wilhelm von Schlan, formerly of NATO. She's KGB, isn't she? Technically, Langley thinks she's with SNV. Not that it makes a whole hell of a lot of difference. Yeah. Just keep me informed, will you? Yes. Mrs. Banks? Yes. My name is Burnside. I'm from the legal department of ACI. to express the sorrow of the whole of my department. Thank you. I have not seen any physicians so soon after the tragedy, but the firm is naturally concerned that you have everything that yes, you need. Yes, I'm sure they are, but uh, well, there's very little we need. We? Well, the children and I. Yes, of course. How is the new school? I didn't know AC. I knew about that. Oh, uh, do sit down, Mr. Burnside. Uh, excuse me? Of course. What are your immediate plans? Well, I suppose his family will want some sort of uh, memorial service. Mm. You'll be staying here in England? It all depends. On what? I'm going to spend a few days in France with the Durands. He's head of ACI in Paris, as you know. And they have a farmhouse in the Dordogne. He was very fond of Robert. Well, that sounds like a very good idea. Want to get over the shock? Uh, can I offer you a drink or anything? Uh, no, no, thank you. You'll be coming back, of course, for the memorial service. Oh, yes. It'll be interesting to see how many of Robert's friends are allowed out of Czechoslovakia for it, don't you think, Mr. Burnside? Mm. Of course, his friends were mostly Czech. He'd lost touch with the others. That's true. I mean, he had been based abroad for such a long time. People like Marushka. Do you think she'll be allowed to leave? I'm sorry, who? But you must know Marushka. She was Robert's mistress. I think she was one of the loveliest women I've ever seen. She had a sort of feline elegance, and she was so witty in so many languages. But of course, I realized what was bound to happen when I met her. Myself, I found her rather superficial, but I absolutely understood what Robert saw in her. After all, he was going to be 53 next birthday, and apart from anything else, she was young enough to be his daughter. The second chance of youth? Yes. Would you like to see some photographs of her? They're not uh, specifically of her, of course. I think that would be just a little too liberal. They were taken of Robert at various company functions, but uh, she's always there. There. That's Marushka. I think it's rather good of Robert, too, don't you? Yes, I do. And uh, there she is again. Why don't you borrow these photographs for the house magazine? Work. Well, I'm sure they'll want to do a piece on Robert, and I do have a lot of photographs of him. I would rather they didn't use one of those awful formal portraits of him. They always made Robert look so stuffy. Yes, well, thank you very much. It was very kind of you to come round and see me, Mr. Burnside. Not at all. So unexpected. But now, if you'll excuse me, I do have rather a lot to do. Of course. As you know, I've just got back from Devon, and I haven't really thought about what I'm going to need in France. Of course. I'm catching the British Airways flight at 10.30 the day after tomorrow. What are you doing? Going home. First get hold of special effects, Dobson. Well, he'll certainly have gone home. Then get him back. I want some photographic work done. I want him in Prague by tomorrow afternoon. After you've got him, there's a flash signal for Paris Station. Just because it's been a difficult day, there's no reason to assume it's over.
Morning. 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 Uh, just drop by on the off chance that you may have uh, come across those figures that Robert was getting out for me. Yes, I have found something that could be important. Oh. Actually, I haven't found anything. Oh. I was just wondering if Marushka might have them. Well, if she or any other chick has them, it's too late now. Yes, I see, but what if she doesn't know what they are? Hmm. I have her address. Yes, so have I. I went round there yesterday. Did you find anything? I didn't go in. She was there? Yes, alone. She's very beautiful, isn't she? She's not my type. Do you know Prague well? Mm, not well, no. Perhaps I could show you around. Good idea. Since Mr Banks' death, there's been absolutely nothing to do. Nobody noticed if I left early. Say about three. Fine. Then I could show you the city and we could have supper at my flat. I wish he wouldn't do that. It reminds me of my toothache. Haven't you done anything about that yet? Well, I've got some stuff from the chemistry. Did it help? Well, I think it does work on the principle that tastes so filthy you don't notice the pain. <laughs> well, you must see a lot of those in ACI. Not really. Oh, well, the boss must have done that. Well, there was always one or two wherever he went. Well, they were civilians, of course, I mean, advisors. Mm. You can always tell them, can't you? They have those extraordinary trousers. And they never take their hats off. <gasps> well, you know what worries me? If the KGB got hold of those papers, they could break the code that Robert was using. And all the other businessmen, I mean, the ones that did the same job as Robert, would really be in trouble. That was why I was hoping there might be somewhere else that he would have kept the papers in the code book. Just somewhere a bit less obvious than his flat or the office. You see, I wonder if he had a place that nobody knew about. Actually, there is somewhere. You see, the thing is that ACI bought this flat. Well, the whole idea was to entertain VIPs, mm. but all the VIPs stay in hotels because the police like to keep an eye on them when they meet Westerners. So, Mr Banks used it with Marushka. Where is it? I only realised when he asked me to have some champagne and flowers sent round there. I mean, people like commissars for heavy industry drink a lot of champagne, but I've never heard of one wanting flowers. Yes, but where is it? In Plani, 26. Oh, God. What is it? That monkey. It's just reminded me it's my mother's birthday. <laughs> she doesn't look like that. I haven't sent her a telegram or anything. Um, we're an hour ahead of London. If, um, yeah, if I phone now, I could just catch her before she leaves. She always has a birthday tea with her sister, my aunt. But you go to your flat. I'll see you there. But you'll be coming to supper. Of course I will. I'm not for sure, I'll be it? there! She's doing what? From Paris. I see. Yes, thank you. Huh. Mike, get up here, will you? Oh, yes, sir. It's happening. Sorry, sir? I've had a signal from Willie. He's staking out a house where he thinks Banks is hiding. There's a girl in there, presumably Horikova. He's going to move in as soon as she leaves. Roger, sir. So I want you to stay here in case he phones through before I get back again. Right, sir. Right. Oh, I've just had a call from Paris Station. Mrs Banks told me she was flying to Paris to stay with some friends. But they're going to be very disappointed. Because she's also booked on an air flight from Paris to Prague half hour after a plane gets in from London. Just popping around to see her. See how she can charm her way out of this one. Yes, sir. Thanks. Willie Kane. Uh, do sit down, Mr. Burnside. Now, what can I offer you to drink? Nothing, thank you. I really didn't expect to see you again, so this is a very pleasant surprise. I rang ACI. The only Burnside they employ is female and works in accounts. 
Then we can stop messing about. We know about the airplane ticket. But I told you about that. The Aeroflot one from Paris to Prague. Now, why do you want to return to Prague? Your husband's body's here. I've been expecting somebody like you. Not, I admit, quite so soon. Like a whiskey? No, thank you. Not while you're on duty, eh? Like a policeman. Let me say one thing at the outset. Make one thing absolutely clear. Two, come to think of it. One, I'm not going back. And two, you cannot make me. Didn't it seem to you, Mr. Burnside, that it was extraordinarily tidy? That Robert should have had that accident when he did? Mm -hmm. Oh, that his emotional life had come to a head, and that I wasn't there either to accompany him to that party or to identify his body. Perhaps. I don't believe for one moment that Robert is dead. And if you don't mind my saying so, I don't think you do either. So would you like to tell me, Mr. Banks, just what the hell you think you're doing? Yes, why not? I don't know how much you know about me. That's what I've been told. I come from a family of what Bernard Shaw called downstarts. They were... They are now a lot of us. Did you notice that? I wasn't going to leave them completely. I talk about them as though they were dead. There was a lot of talent in the family. A lot. And for two generations, all they'd done was breed and get poorer. Gentry without the price of admission, you understand? Yes. Then, through some genetic fluke, bingo. I am born. <laughs> I tell you frankly, Mr... Kane. Mr. Kane. I was brilliant. Brilliant. All that latent talent lost for all those years in one man. I'm setting myself up. You realise that, Mr. King? I think so, yeah. Because I know what I am. Anyway, for a few years at least, I appeared to be brilliant. I became a scientist, a man of the 20th century. <laughs> am I boring you? Not so far, no. Then, like any scientist, I peaked. And I know it's a jargon word, but forgive me. Anyway, after that, there was only decline, so I did what any honest failure does. I went into commerce. Now, there's not much competition in British commerce, so I was, once again, an enormous success. I had everything. And then something happened that made me realize I had nothing. What was that? <laughs> I fell in love. Tell me, is your husband expecting you? What an extraordinary question. I'm just interested to know whether there's another flight booked from Prague to Moscow. No, there are no more flights. So, what had you in mind? You've never met Robert, have you? No. I think you'd interest each other. He's not only a very clever man, but he's very gentle and he's a very innocent man. People who defect knowing what he knows aren't innocent. But he doesn't see it like that. It's how Marushka Horakova sees it. You did know that she's Czech Secret Service, didn't you? I always assumed she was, that or KGB. Does your husband know that she was? Oh, yes, he knew. But you must understand, Robert doesn't think like you. For him, Marushka is quite simply the woman he's in love with. And you're telling me you accepted this? Of course I didn't accept it. He's my husband. He's the father of my children. So why did you come to England? To place my children in a new school. Leaving him free to defect? He sees it as going to live with the woman he loves. It's quite simple. I told you about my background, such as it is, so you won't misunderstand. You won't think, oh, he's doing it for the money. I have more money than... Than I have. Yes. Judging from that suit you're wearing, yes. No offence, man, but good tailors are damned expensive. I'm giving up every status symbol the West provides. And it's not political. It so happens that the woman I'm in love with... Do you know what I mean? Hmm. They write songs about it. Not love. I've loved a lot of things. My wife, my children, my cat, Euclid, Beethoven, a lot of things. But in love, it's different. I didn't know before, but I know now. It so happens that the woman I'm in love with is not allowed to leave Czechoslovakia. That's all there is to it. You know she's an SNB agent? Hmm. She told me. I used to work for JIB. Two sides of the same rather dirty coin. How much information have you given them so far to get asylum? <laughs> it's not that at all. I'll get a job. This is the perfect solution. The perfect solution. I'm dead. Irene gets a damn great pension. Everybody's happy. You really think the KGB and the SNB have gone to all this trouble just so you can shack up with one of their agents? There's no cash. I know, there's no cash. Who told you that? Maruska. You do know what your husband was doing out there, don't you? For JIB? Mm -hmm. Well, of course. But you must know better than I that when anybody's approached for that kind of work, it is normal policy for the wife to be told too. Not everything, I presume, but enough. When did you realize the Russians were turning in? 
It was very subtle, of course. At first, there were just our new friends, artists, writers, scientists, people like that. But later on, of course, at every party we went to, there was Marushka. I once told Robert I thought she was an agent, and he said he thought so too. But as far as he was concerned, a very attractive, amusing girl found him irresistible. And why didn't you tell his contact? Well, I didn't know who his contact was. And even if I had, I had no evidence. Robert was still sending information to J.I.B. And in any case, he was my husband. It's a pity you weren't here earlier. You'd have met Druska. If you'd seen her, you'd realize what I've been talking about. I did see her. Waited till she'd gone. How tactful of you. Well, presumably, you won't go on using this flat. It belongs to ACI, doesn't it? She has her own apartment. Would you be moving in? No, it's too small. We'll find something bigger. They tell me they'll do what they can. Shouldn't bother if I were you. Once they finish squeezing you like a lemon, Maruska will just move on. The, the devil do you mean by that? Oh, come on. Grow up, Mr. Banks. Now, what do you mean? You're not the first. There have been hundreds before you. Hundreds of what? Defectors, idealists, I don't know, suckers. You choose your own word. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you why they want you, why they made it so easy for you. Not because sooner or later you'll tell them who your contacts are. They want you because of what you know. Many things you don't even realize you know, like details of the hardware that ACI don't sell to the communists, like the research work they're doing at the moment. You mustn't underestimate yourself. You know a lot. Nobody can stop you going to Prague. I know. But I'd like to know what you're going to do there. See my husband. Well, what happens if he tells you to go to hell? Will you follow him to Moscow or wherever they send him? I will tell him that you cannot compromise with communism and that if he wishes, I will divorce him and he can marry Marushka. On the one condition, they both leave Czechoslovakia and come to live in the West. And if he refuses? I'll kill her. Mr. Burnside, that is General Tulejewski. During the war, he was deputy commander of the Polish Home Army. He was my father. Yes, I was born Polish. My father sent me to live in England when the war broke out. Throughout the entire war, he and his men waited. They had few weapons and very little food. Any who were caught were killed. But their orders were to watch the enemy and to wait. And that was the most difficult part of all. To tell your men they must go hungry. To see them hide in the forest like animals to tell them they must watch their families starve or be sent to Germany as slave labor, but they must not attack their enemy because the time is not yet. In July, 1944, the call came. Moscow Radio told them that the Red Army was going to try and liberate Warsaw. They were told to rise and to hack down any Germans trying to flee westwards. So they rose. And with what weapons they had, everyone fought the Germans. But it was a lie. The Russians did not try to liberate Warsaw. They stopped on the Vistula and they let the Germans massacre the Poles. 300,000 of my father's men were killed. Because, you see, the communists did not want a strong, free, democratic Poland. They wanted a slave, communist Poland. Mrs. Banks, what happened to your father? He was finally captured by the Germans. The Russians overran Poland and finally I found out what happened. He was tried by the Russians as a collaborator and shot. Your trip may not be necessary. If what we're trying to do succeeds, the photographs you lent us will be very useful. You don't understand. I'm not blaming you. You just don't understand. Do you like looking at dirty pictures, Mr. Banks? No, I don't. But if you do, you'll love these. Uh, they're confidential, of course. I mean, you're not clear to know who they are. The fellow with Maruska here used to be a NATO general. He's American. With the Italian air attaché. When did you get these? And these two were both cipher clerks at the Norwegian embassy. They still don't know who the girl there is. I don't believe you. This fellow watching here is the deputy commander of the West German 6th Panzers. Uh, he was with the French naval section at their embassy. Blake's English. He's the second secretary. And this one was groomed for an ambassadorship. Of course, he's finished. I mean, uh, once the KGB had developed these pictures, they were all finished. What should I do? Make a leg out. You're not going anywhere, Mr. Banks. Sit home with me. Willie rang in, sir. He's bringing Banks back with him. Good. Oh, and C phoned. I've notified him. How'd he react? 
Grunt didn't ring off. Well, I'm glad he's pleased. Good night, then, sir. Good night, Mike. 